Today we're ranking every GTA finale, but I've also scored each one in four separate categories worth 10 points each. Every mission will get the chance to achieve 40 points for the perfect rating. I'll be brutally honest here, the beginning of this mission absolutely sucks. There's no sense of build up like in other GTA finales. I mean, come on, driving my motorbike a mile to pick up Lamar, then all that way back again just to start the mission is hardly the blood rushing build up for something epic that a final mission should have. However, at the Metal Foundry, we finally get some action when almost endless waves of noose and FIB swarm the building. And with the three characters all being positioned in separate vantage points, it really plays out quite well switching between them all and getting a chance to take out the enemies from various positions around the building. When everything's concluded inside the foundry, our next objective is to now hunt down everyone that's done us wrong throughout the entire game. It does however feel a bit rushed. Franklin is tasked with killing Mr. Cheng, who's three miles away. Uh, yeah, no thanks Rockstar. At least you could switch characters to Trevor and drive 1.7 miles, and again, it's just driving and talking to Ron on the telephone. So Trevor arrives at the pier and is tasked with shooting Steve Haynes, which kind of just fills the mission with this pointless little part where you have to lose the wanted level. Franklin finally arrives at Mr. Cheng. Also, Franklin doesn't have to lose the cops here, and Trevor did. So Michael's task is not that much better. We literally approach Stretch in the middle of a basketball court and just shoot him. I think Trevor's second task here is by far the best and this is when the mission starts to get much better because we go to Devin Weston's mansion, fight our way through bodyguards in order to kidnap him. The very end of the mission is satisfying though with the three characters finally reuniting and that awesome part where we get to push the car off the cliff and watch it explode on the rocks below. Is it challenging? Uh, the warehouse part? Maybe. The rest? I don't think so, so I think it deserves a 6. Creative? We discussed there's a lack of scripted events or wow moments, there's no special vehicle or new mechanics for this mission, I'd say it scores another 6 here. Is it fun? Well honestly, yeah it is, but it's also kind of got a lot of actionless driving which really did the mission dirty, and it just has to score another 6 here. How memorable is it? I think it deserves a 7 out of 10. GTA 5's total score is 25 out of 40. Now, GTA 4. There's actually two finales here and one arguably better than the other. However, as most of the main elements such as the location and tasks are the same, we will rank them both as one. The mission starts unlike GTA 5 with a very fun driving sequence, no boring telephone drives and instead a high speed pursuit on a highway after the enemy. Eventually you arrive at the location of the fight and instantly you're thrown into action, taking cover as tens of enemies shoot towards you. Fighting here is placed really well and once you've cleared all of the enemies outside you really have to take a breath before you go inside to a much tighter dangerous environment. Once you are inside and most of the enemies have cleared up, you'll chase Dimitri or Pegarino to the rooftop where they both escape, Dimitri via a helicopter and Pegarino chooses a boat. Now Dimitri's ending is arguably the worst of the two here as you now have to get into this boat and follow the helicopter as you avoid rockets firing at you. The rockets part is really cool but it's nothing compared to the Pegarino version where you get on this dirt bike and have a lot more fun where you eventually ramp off of this wooden ramp here and then grab onto little Jacob's helicopter. But something kind of interesting here and fun was the fact that you have to like spam the button to climb quickly into the helicopter on both versions of the mission. It builds up the suspense quite nicely. However, both of them end in the same way where the helicopter is hit by a missile and you both come down on the Happiness Island. Can I just add what a great location for a final mission this is? And when you eventually catch up to them, you get that payoff that you've wanted for a very long time. Is it challenging? Yes. It's pretty chaotic and crazy, at least the start is also very action packed as well and I'm going to give it an 8. Creativity, the bike ramping onto the helicopters, missile dodging, button mashing, epic locations, sequences, so on and so forth, definitely give this one another 8. I'd say this is definitely fun, all the moments in the mission you have you feeling like a real life James Bond. Nothing except that weird helicopter chase part feels like a filler, so I'd say this actually deserves a solid 9. How memorable is it? I'd say definitely a 10. This is a memorable mission with a great storytelling ending, giving it 35. An S tier mission. Okay, let's go for GTA San Andreas now. This mission is amazing, we all knew it, but how does it actually score with our categories? First of all, it does start with a short drive, but again, unlike GTA 5, the whole city is rioting and you can clearly see the absolute chaos that Tenpenny has brought to the city. There's no boring, hi Ron, blah blah blah, it's just straight up, oh, okay, this is happening and this is really it. Once you're inside is where the real challenge starts because you have to fight through different waves of enemies, 
but each wave of enemies is actually a crucial part of Big Smoke's drug empire. The design of the mission is really iconic. The way how you have to move up floor by floor, knowing each one is closer to Big Smoke, is actually a really, really great idea. Then you also get this boss fight against Big Smoke where he's wearing body armor, so his health is increased by quite a large amount. But it doesn't stop there because as soon as Big Smoke dies, along comes Tenpenny who steals more money from you and sets the building on fire and now you have a vehicle chase scene again this mission has no points where it feels boring then eventually once you catch up sweet falls into your vehicle and takes over the driving and you're given this really awesome uh, scrolling shooter part is this mission challenging yes the floors the boss fight the chases the timer sequence this all make it i'd say a nine creative i'd say almost every part of this mission is unique and crafted so therefore it deserves another nine it's definitely really, really fun, probably one of the most fun finales, where I'm going to give it another 9. Memorable? I mean, it is memorable. 99% of people would say this mission is the most iconic and memorable finale, so it definitely has to score a perfect score of 10. Total score for San Andreas is 37 out of 40. Grand Theft Auto Vice City. So the final mission for this game was really great for the time of release. It throws you pretty much straight into the action, where you can clearly see that this mission has lifted a lot of inspiration from the movie Scarface. What I really like about this mission is how well it knows its place. It doesn't need to be over the top, it just needs to feel right for the game. And Tommy Vercetti defending his new mansion and empire has, that he's built from Sonny Ferrelli does seem like a great ending. Then there's also the twist that Lance has betrayed us, which a lot of us didn't actually see coming and takes us by surprise because we only find out about it for sure right here at this very last moment. Killing Lance is kind of bittersweet as well because he was kind of a decent guy throughout most of the game. The mission is definitely fun but I'll admit despite it being my favourite GTA of all time for many reasons the finale is far from the best out of all the GTA games. At the very end you also do get a boss fight but it's not hard by any means. Is it challenging? Yes, probably the perfect amount for the game that it is, so I think it does deserve its own 8. I'll admit it doesn't offer anything that new. I like the inspiration and nod to Scarface, but if we're being fair, it doesn't really score much more than a 6 here. It is fun, it just feels like you're Tony Montana though, and defending your own castle. Uh, I'd say it does score around a 7 on the fun scale. I'd say definitely memorable, it's got good writing and a good twist, so I'd say it scores an 8, giving Vice City a total of 20. Nine. Grand Theft Auto 3. The last mission is extremely hard. I mean, it begins when Claude heads to the exchange with Catalina. For some reason, we haven't learned our lesson because she backstabs us once again. The mission begins immediately with action surrounded by enemies and you've got no weapons besides a handgun. Then the next part is even harder because we have to chase down Catalina's helicopter and it comes to a rest down at the dam. And this is where Claude must shoot his way through enemies in order to reach the landing pad at the bottom of the dam and blow it up with a rocket launcher. Now the challenge here is really hard because the enemies have some of the most overpowered weapons in the entire game. To top that off, the helicopter also drops bombs to make it that little bit more painful and frustrating. Once we eventually make it to the landing pad, we have to finally take down her helicopter with a bazooka, which is pretty fun. And finally nailing the helicopter is one of the most satisfying moments in the entire game. Is it challenging? I feel it definitely is a challenge and deserves a 7. Is it creative? To be honest, not really, so I think it deserves a 5. Is it fun? Say it deserves a 5. Is it memorable? Perhaps it's memorable for difficulty reasons, so it definitely scores around a 6 here, giving GTA 3 a total score of 23. Vice City Stories. I'm excited for this one. The mission begins immediately and it's like, damn, you're given this hunter attack helicopter where you have to head to this skyscraper fire missiles and destroy anyone in your way which is really awesome beginning for a mission. It then has this really awesome change of events where you're finally hit, set on fire and forced to land on the rooftop. Now remember end of the line from San Andreas where you work from the ground up? Well in this mission you work from the roof down. You have to fight your way through multiple levels of enemies on each office floor. Then this helicopter shows up and you have this awesome kind of boss fight where you face off with it. When all of this is said and done, you go back up to the rooftop to face off with Mendez, and it's sort of another boss fight where you fight two people at once, which gives this a proper standoff moment. However, it's literally packed with
with action and you're not going to be bored throughout any of it. Is it challenging? Yes. The immediate helicopter, flaws of enemies and so on, scores it a 9. Is it creative? I feel like it is creative because it gives you so much to play with, so it scores another 8 here. Is it fun? Yep. Definitely. The fact that, like I say, the helicopter, the building, I'd say it gets a 9. Is it memorable and is the story good? I'd say I'll give it an 8 because it's not as memorable as others, but it's still definitely going to be good, memorable for the fun aspect. So the total score for this game is 34. Liberty City stories now, and I'll be honest, this mission sucks. Uh, it's such a contrast from the Vice City stories for all the wrong reasons. You literally start the mission driving um, the guy, Salvatore, to a whole other island just to get to the city hall. And then you do get to fight some enemies, and then the mission starts getting good like five minutes into it, where you eventually get onto this boat and get to fire a minigun at boats chasing after you, so that's really, really good. But then you eventually arrive at this lighthouse location where the finale takes place, and I'm going to be honest here, it's not a skill issue. The way the enemies have been placed are just terrible mission design. I mean, there's enemies that just hide behind boxes that you just cannot hit, even if they come out of their own cover. So it really, really angered me, to be honest. Anyway, once you actually clear out the enemies, if you're able to, you uh, get to this final point where it takes, like, you actually have to face off against another helicopter here. So it's very similar to Vice City stories. It's definitely challenging, so I think it deserves a solid 7 here. Is it creative? Not really. It's got about a 6 out of 10 here, because the boat part is the only part that's actually quite fun. Is it uh, fun? Not really. I think it deserves about a 6. Like I say, the boat part is fun. Is it memorable? Uh, not really compared to other missions. You're not going to remember this one. So I think it scores about a 5. Giving it a total score point of 24. The Ballad of Gay Tony. This one has some awesome action. It begins at an abandoned theme park in Hove Beach where you've got to destroy these weird little chicken machines that have drugs hidden inside them. There's a decent challenge here because you've got lots of enemies hidden among the various abandoned attractions ride and that's actually a really cool location for this to take place. Once you've cleared out all the enemies you also get this super rare bike at the time, the Beatty. We then have a really heartwarming moment where Yasuf Amir, what a legend, comes along and helps us out by firing rockets at the cars while we race towards the airport. We then have this really cool scripted event where we have to chase down a private jet and jump aboard before it takes off. There's a mini fight on the plane similar to that one mission in GTA San Andreas but it all ends pretty quickly. Honestly for a DL DLC mission, it's actually very cool. The only downside is this kind of long drive at the end. Is it challenging? Fairly. I'd say it scores a 6. Creative? It's definitely got some creative parts in it, so 7. Is it fun? Yeah, I'd say it's fun. It's definitely better than a lot of them on this list, so another 7. Is it memorable? Uh, I'd say it's average. Let's be honest. It's average, it's fun, but it's not like, oh, I remember that. So it scores a 6. So the total points for Ballad of Gay Tony is 26. Lost and Damned. So I actually remember disliking this game when I was younger, but I didn't really give it a chance. I have to admit, it's not actually that bad. So this mission begins at the Liberty City Prison Yard, where we call up some of our lost gang members to come and assist us in finding Billy. Well, the action starts pretty immediately, and it actually feels like a movie, and pretty realistic compared to some of the other missions, but in a very good way. Of course, because we're raiding a police uh, prison yard, there's tons of cops to fight our way through, and it's, it's kind of like the location is staggered really well. It's believable because of course there's going to be a lot of cops guarding this place. And of course there's going to be absolute chaos. Well, we spend the majority of this mission navigating the chaotic prison yard, inching closer to Billy. When we eventually get to Billy, we can finally execute him in that classic GTA 4 fashion. And again, like Vice City, the mission knows its place and delivers well with what it needs to do. We then drive back to the Lost MC Clubhouse and get to torch it to the ground. Is the mission challenging? I'd say yes, but it doesn't deliver anything major, so a 7. Is it creative? Not so much, but when it's compared to the Ballad of Gay Tony, it doesn't really compete, so a 5. Is it fun? Yes, it is fun. It feels more grounded, it does it well, and it's not boring, apart from the very end where you have to drive the bike, so I'd say 7. Is it memorable? Uh, it's not so memorable, but definitely concludes the story well, so I think it deserves a 6. Total score for this mission is 25. I'm going to do a completely separate ranked video for the portable game. So if you want to see more GTA content, stay tuned and subscribe down below if you've enjoyed today's video.